Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use Iros, an interactive remote overlay that you can embed in your stream. If you go to the website, there's a quick start guide here which you can follow or you can look at the documentation. We're just going to go through this getting started here basically. The first step is to create a new session. We're just going to type in our stream URL here. Um, this is used to display the stream in the editor so you know where to position elements. You're going to see in a second what that exactly means. The other option is to provide your stream resolution. Default is 1080p, which is correct for my stream, so I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to click on generate. Now we have two links here, the editor and the overlay link. We're going to copy the second one for now. Go into our streaming software, add a browser source, call this iris at the URL, change the resolution to 1080p, and then we have the overlay embedded here. By default, it's transparent, nothing to see because there are no elements in the overlay. Now I'm going to start streaming, and now we can just open the overlay in our browser. It's important to note that you should not share these links with people you don't trust because um, they contain the session ID, and the session ID is what, used, what is used to um, control the overlay in your stream. So I'm just going to open this now. As you can see, we have now the stream embedded in the background. This is the editor. This is the canvas. The resolution can be changed here, but by default it's 1080p or whatever you provided. Currently the editor works best with uh, widescreen resolutions, which I assume most people use. Then you have also the option to change the embedded stream, but for now this is fine. So now we can go over the different element types. First I'm just going to add a new text element. We can see there's different types here. We're just going to click on text. Now we probably want to move this element because in the top left corner it's just kind of misplaced. Editing or like scaling, rotating and moving is done with hotkeys that are the same as in Blender. So if you've used Blender before you should be familiar with them. You just press G with the element selected and then you can move it around. If you press X now it'll lock the movement to the X axis. If you press Y it'll lock it to the Y axis and Shift Z will give you both axes again. Now we have it placed somewhere. As you can see, it's kind of transparent and also has a cyan border. That means it's not visible on stream. If you look at OBS right now, there's nothing to be seen here. So if you want to show it on stream, we can just press H and now it's visible on stream in OBS. And with a little bit of a delay, it'll also show up in the background. This can get a little bit trippy because you now have like two elements, but it syncs up pretty quickly. So now we've placed the element somewhere. We have more visible on stream. I'm going to look at the other, th other properties of a set, uh, an element. The first setting is a name. As you can see on the right here, in the list of elements, each element has a name. I'm just going to call this in the world text for now. We have the position and the size. This is just as a reference. You don't type anything in there for now. It just tells you the dimensions of the element. Another setting is the layer. So if we have two text elements and another one, Give this one background and make it visible on stream. We can see that it's in front of the older text, the first one, because the layering by default is always latest elements on top. If you want to change this, you just click on the original one and increase the layer to one. Now it's in front. So now we have two elements. You can delete them by selecting it and pressing delete or X. Now they're gone, but we still need some to check the other settings. Pretty self-explanatory though. We have an opacity slider here. So if we want, we can make this thing a little bit transparent, right? If we look at OBS again, it's barely visible now. I can change the text and the background color. So if we want it to be like white and red, which is now pretty hard to see, but there we go. It's kind of brown. We can disable the background color. We can change the font. We can change the font size and the text. So those are most of the settings for the text element. We can also format it a little bit if we want, underline, so additional formatting options you have there. And then lastly we have a setting that is not part just for the text element but also for any other element which is the pivot point, I forgot that, which is just the reference point for rotating or scaling. By default it's the center, you can also set it to top left, for example, right now. This is set to left, if you hover over these options you can see a tooltip. Now it's like the bottom right, and if you rotate it, you can see it rotates around the bottom right. So now we're going to move over to the image element. 
Just click on it, add it. By default, it's an empty PNG and it's transparent. So it's even if I show this on stream, it will not show anything because it's just a transparent PNG. If you accidentally click off of it and you don't remember where it was, or if that happens with an element, you can either select it here in the elements list, or if you hold space, all elements will get an outline. So now in this case, um, we want to change the what image it displays. You can see in the settings dialog, we have an URL option. If I just change it to an image link, that doesn't matter. In this case, it's just uh, the logo of the of Iris, but you can paste in any image link you have. It displays the image here. Um, so now in this case, it was square by default. So we kind of want to change this, which we can do by pressing S for scaling. And then we can scale it along both axes or just X. That's kind of trippy because the stream is catching up or along the y-axis. Now, if we rotate the element a little bit, we can also rotate it along the x-axis, and we end up with a rotation or like a scaling that we don't like, we just press Control R and we can undo the transformation. So now it's back to the square. Something we can also do is copy-paste elements, you know, Shift-C and then Shift-V, paste it in. Um, if you copy and paste text with your clipboard, right, in this case, I have this, this image link my clipboard now, like if I if you see this here, if I press Control V in the editor, it'll load the image automatically. Then we can just display it here. What we can also do is um, copy and paste text. So if I just copy normal text, uh, it'll just create a text source uh, element. So if it detects an image, or just you know if it ends in a PNG or whatever, it'll paste it as an image. Otherwise, just text. And by default, the pasted elements are always invisible on stream, so you don't accidentally paste something that you don't want to show. So now we are going to go over to the timer, which is um, just something for timekeeping. So as you can see by default, it's just it's like a text element, but it can track the time. So if we just click start, now you can see it counts up. It has the usual settings for a text element, but we can also make it count down. So if I set this to five and to timer and then start, it counts down. So now we have like a, a little countdown or count up, I guess, to stopwatch, depending on what you need. And you can style it however you want, and then you have like a timer element. Lastly, there is the emote option. Click on there, you can just search for emotes on 7TV. You can just type in emote name, search for it, and it'll give you the first 40 results. And just click on this one, and it adds it as an image element. And you can also like go back and use another one. Um, right now you can't go on the second page. Just assume that uh, the result should be good enough on the first page. Once again, by default, it's invisible. Make it visible like that, and then you can move it around however you want. Um, those are all the element types for now. The last option is favorites. So if you, for example, need an element very often, you just select it and press F, favorites it. And if you open the dialog, you get the element here. For some reason, it doesn't have a name. It's interesting. If you click on that, it just adds it again. I'm not quite sure why it didn't have a name. Let's try a text element. Favorite that. Okay, that's some live debugging. I don't know what the issue here is. Okay. That is a browser issue, I guess. There is a name. It's just not visible. This thing is too taking up, up too much space. Yeah, I have to fix that. As you can see, it's up in a, in Firefox. It should work. But um, so right now the name is just not visible here. But they will all show up here, and then you can add them like that. And um, then the names should also work because now they also all have the same name, which is not intended. All right, that's all the features for now. If you want to delete favorites, you can uh, just select them like this in delete mode, done, and then they're gone. They will be saved. So if you reload the editor or close your browser, they are still going to be there, as long as you don't like clear your cookies and that kind of stuff. And that's basically all the features that the overlay has for now. There might be new features added later down the line, but for now, that's the basic functionality. So yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.